Hey there, and welcome back to the Eastern Bloc, the channel that offers an in-depth view at automotive car culture in the Eastern Europe. You see, we car guys, well, we like all sorts of cars. Sure, we prefer high performance and enthusiast cars, but we also like strange cars, quirky cars, luxury cars, and even SUVs. Fact of the matter is though that most of us can't really afford to buy or enjoy them. This seems to be more evident in my home country as the contrast between automobiles is one of the highest around. It's a common sight at a stoplight to see a 100,000 euro luxury or exotic limousine or SUV mixing in with everyday traffic made up mostly of beat up secondhand rejects that the westerners have long since abandoned. And this situation, to me at least, begs the question, what exactly is car culture in my country? I mean, we can't be all driving grey diesel hatchbacks forever. Let's try and find out and see if we can distill the essence of automotive uh, passion in my home country and in the Eastern Europe. And we continue along this bumpy road with today's car. Is it an MPV? Is it a crossover? Is it an SUV? Is it none of the above, but more than the sum of its components? I give you the second generation Fiat Chroma. So let's take a closer look at what the Italians thought that a family Grand Tourer should offer in 2005. And right off the bat, you can see that the design is pleasing to the eye. You can always put your faith in the Italian designers to come up with a good shape. The small headlights somewhat seem awkward at first, but then they seem to complete the silhouette of the car. It's almost a throwback, a reminiscence of sports cars from the 60s and 50s at least to me there's a low stance and uh, the median line is below the belt line of the car is below below what you would expect so that gives it a rather different and elegant look it's a lancia feel uh, something of that nature i might have misspoken about the inspiration of this uh, uh, fascia but at least to me it's something uh, reminiscent a throwback to 1940s Lancias and Alfa Romeos that rounded big grille and that low uh, stance for the headlights I don't know they seem to invoke elegance and movement but very understated and rather chic classic that sort of way things are not looking quite well in the middle section and the back at least not in my opinion i think the the stance of the car is too high the greenhouse is out of proportion with the rest of the sheet metal and this especially goes in the back right here with the big uh, door cutout but i guess they had to make that choice in order to provide more space for the rear seat well, you can't really accuse the designers of anything wrong, but it's just not as striking or as pleasing as the front end of the car. Moving on to the back, there's a rather strange setup. There's horizontal taillights, but they have those, uh, they have those, uh, I don't know, there's a hint of rounded uh, elements inside the rear uh, stoplights sort of looking exotic or almost like a ferrari maybe there's just a hint of it anyway it's a good look for this car so let's talk about the mechanics a bit this car is based on the gm epsilon platform with mcpherson uh, suspension in the front and multi-link rear setup this will be important later on when i drive the car but i'll explain that to you at the right moment it also uses a 1.9 liter capacity diesel engine <clears throat> in four cylinders in four cylinder layout and with a 16 valve head which in this itineration translates to 150 horsepower 
with 320 newton meters on tap. Uh, it also is mated to an automatic transmission, a six-speed unit, and just for the fun of it, let's hear the car run. Interior space in this particular Fiat, well, at first glance, there's actually, there are things to like about it. Uh, fit and finish of the dashboard is correct and in tune with the uh, offerings from 2005, at least in the lower part of the market. But there are also things that you don't find quite so attractive. These shiny plastics plastic trims have not aged so well, the buttons seem to be peeling off their paint, uh, the door cards are made of inferior quality and what is infuriating is that they're made of lower quality plastics and finished uh, materials right where you touch them all day long, on the handle and on the armrest uh, position so I don't quite understand why this is the case I mean the the top part of the door card is rather solid and well put together but the middle section and the lower one are just uh, not on par uh, the steering wheel is a rather um, <clears throat> is a rather awkward uh, has a rather awkward shape and position it's tilted to the front and it's also quite bulgy here in the airbag section. It's not sculpted and it's not ergonomic. It's just meant you have a strange position when you're holding it at the 9 o'clock and 6 o'clock area. But uh, I guess these are just foibles because if you buy a Fiat, you know you're buying things on the cheaper side. You're trying to make uh, some sort of... Uh, uh, economic smart decision and you're not looking at these details other than that at first glance uh, the interior is pretty nice and it's nicely appointed you've got dual zone climate control uh, CD player lots of buttons uh, typical of the era I like the the air vents and uh, <clears throat> the sun visors while well, everything is it's okay it's well put together what i would complain about in this particular car uh, given its mpv spirit or uh, its demeanor to carry and to offer a lot of space you don't quite see that philosophy inside there's not a lot of cubby spaces and what few there are are not so big and spacious as you might expect for example, Renault offers in the Scenic and the Espace um, drawers for storing goods beneath the seats. This is not quite the case in the Fiat Chroma. There is nothing here that could inspire you to carry things or to use it as a family hauler. The driving position for the driver's seat is rather good and it offers enough uh, adjustments i guess you can tilt the chair on the back you can uh, you can move it you can adjust the height and you can do all sorts of things with it not uh, no it's <laughs> it's rather comfortable it's strange because it's a mix of comfort and uh, rigidity I was expecting Italian seats to be more soft, but they actually feel pretty good. I would have liked this seat to be more sculpted, more, um, more uh, in terms with sporty seats, if you will. Though they're not sporty, they're just hugging seats. But that's my own personal preference. I don't think that that's a requirement for everybody. Okay, so... So we'll have a look in the back and see what's what with the back seats.
space in the back is quite adequate, more than adequate I might say. It's um, it's very roomy in here. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, head uh, room and knee room. There's also this lever which uh, folds down the front seat, the passenger front seat. You can uh, maybe use it uh, to um, facilitate installing your child seat or I don't know what other usage you might find for that lever. Uh, a nice feature, there are, um, there are um, uh, vents in the back for heating and cooling. Uh, but again, not enough storage space in my opinion if you're looking for an MPV practicality here. It's just basic uh, comfort uh, options for the mid-2000s. The trims are okay. They're, they don't seem to be of lower quality compared to the front ones. Uh, but nothing really uh, impressive about this interior other than what I've just mentioned. trunk space is more than adequate and what's nice about it that it has a it has that uh, very appreciated feature of uh, double flooring or having an additional storage space and below that there's actually a space saver tire wheel right so driving the fiat chroma the second generation 2005 Fiat Chroma 1.9 JTD 150 horsepower. There's a lot of clicks and bangs here. Uh, everything seems to be in working order, or although the car has seen a lot of miles. So when you start it up, you really get the feel that, well, it's been well worn. It's been tank taken care of but nonetheless well worn. Oh, first impressions I had with this car. Although it is based on the Epsilon uh, GM platform, which uh, in theory offers independent suspension, multi-link suspension at the rear, and quite a fancy setup at the front, I find this car rather agricultural. I don't know if that's the correct term, but I imagine this is what it would feel like to drive an American SUV. It's quite, uh, it's quite stiff, it's quite rigid, it's quite hard to drive. The steering, although is perfectly uh, okay in terms of uh, um, in terms of input and uh, it works quite fine. It's actually pretty hard to. To operate, uh, you almost have to manhandle this car into submission, and that's quite rather that's rather strange, given that it's based on a car platform. I mean, and it's nothing. Don't get me wrong. It, don't get me wrong. It's nothing wrong with the car itself. It's perfectly fine. It's just rough, and this feeling of roughness is also accentuated by the fact that the engine. Uh, well, it's rather crude. It's powerful, it's plenty powerful, but it's, uh, well, it's, as I've said, it's untamed. It's, uh, it's like a truck engine. Yeah, I know what you're gonna say. It's a diesel, sorry about that. It's a diesel car, so it's supposed to be rough, but even for my tastes, it's a bit rough. I'm not complaining, I would actually like to own such a car, a car that's rough and is, is not easy to be driven, but uh, I don't see anybody appreciating it that much. At least not the people, because you see the people who'd, who would be looking at this car as a second-hand option would be those that like uh, uh, I don't know, impressive uh, Grand Tourers such as the uh, GL class, the R class, and but don't really have the money to spring for a Mercedes, albeit a second-hand one. And 
in that regards this car offers uh, well it offers the f the feel of a large SUV but not quite as refined as you you would think the, it's it offers what a true GT Grand Tourer um, four-door should offer enough space for uh, for all the passengers comfort some luxury features that niche market feel that uh, interesting automobiles offer and it should do it in theory uh, rather well because it's based on a passenger car a classic saloon uh, platform the Epsilon platform from GM was was really the basis for at least 15 uh, saloons and hatchbacks front-wheel drive uh, architecture nothing fancy nothing crude nothing beastly yet yeah, this car feels anything but it's actually quite intimidating to drive it's like a truck it's like a tank it's it's something really different and I do enjoy it for what it offers but I don't know if I would recommend it as a second-hand option to anybody the automatic transmission well it works nice but I can feel its age I don't know if it's appropriate or it's a defect or it's caused by wear but I don't like the shifting times at all I feel uh, they're quite slow and furthermore the the gearbox is well it's it's considering quite a lot which gear to be in which is not so which is not something you would desire kick down is adequate when you push the accelerator pedal uh, there's also the manual option you can shift up or down uh, via moving this lever but I wouldn't really recommend it as there is some lag in that department as well other than that it's a good option for city driving I <laughs> I can imagine what this car would be like with a manual transmission it would be really a <laughs> it would be really a truck wouldn't it okay so back to the automatic I don't find anything strange or uh, important I don't okay so back to the automatic I don't really find anything uh, worth criticizing or uh, putting down Fiat for because it's a common gearbox choice for 2005 you don't expect much of it and if you're not a driver enthusiast you won't mind this uh, automatic automatic operation uh, seating position while driving well as I've said the seats themselves are comfortable but a bit rigid which is a nice uh, nice feature uh, I don't see myself getting tired while driving this car for extended periods of time so in that regard it is a true Grand Tourer handling well this is a mixed bag as I've said it feels like a truck it's very stable and it's quite uh, in opposition of what you would expect because it has a multi rear setup in the back for the suspension so naturally you would assume that this is a great handling car and it is stable don't get me wrong but you just don't want to do too many maneuvers in it if you start to push it around it's it's a well it's a hoot it's um it's not gonna do that granted this particular model has around 200,000 kilometers that I know of and I'm not sure that the suspension setup is quite on par meaning some shocks or pieces of the suspension might need replacement but they're not bad I mean nothing is clunking nothing is uh, beating beneath the bodywork it just feels like a body on frame SUV this is and I don't even know what that should feel like I, I just 
I'm using my automotive imagination and limited resources to come up with an explanation as to why this car is so crude. So in that regard, if you want a crude car that's, that needs manhandling, then this is the, the option for you, no, no question about it. Right, so conclusions to the second generation Fiat Chroma. While it is an unusual car, I'll give it that. It's got an interesting driving uh, dynamic um, and I don't really find it quite to my taste. The engine options, at least from my perspective, are sufficient but a bit unrefined. So in terms of performance, it will give you what you expect of it, but uh, that diesel sound might not quite be to everybody's taste. I don't personally mind it because I'm used to rough vehicles and I don't really look for the premium feel, though I must admit this diesel is rather crude even for my standards. It, it's strange to see how, how far we've come in 20 years time in terms of technology and engine options. Uh, and even more impressive if we consider that this was cons that this was seen as the pinnacle of diesel offerings at the time it was one of the first offerings with a common rail and a high high um, high horsepower output uh, i cannot really give you a pro or con situation here or whether you should buy this Fiat Chroma or not because it's a rather cheap car and it's not a very practical or a very reliable one at that. So out the window goes the, the consideration that this is actually a sensible car. It's uh, sometimes it's, uh, it has its moods, it's uh, not so cheap to fix. It's reliable in its own way, but not, not something you would consider when getting a car on the cheap. It's not really an enthusiast's car. Uh, it's not a car guy's car because it doesn't offer any spectacular emotions or uh, hard edge uh, sensations in that regard. It's a quirky style. Uh, saloon disguised as a hatchback or maybe a, an estate car, an MPV. Um, it's for the guy that really likes Fiat. I don't know how to put it more uh, simple than that. There are these, uh, there are these um, people that do appreciate what Fiat had to offer and uh, well it's a fresh uh, change of look uh, compared to all the Volkswagens and German cars that are uh, roaming my country's roads. So I guess that's all I have to say about this strange and rare offering. You might not see these chromas quite so often, but they do offer an interesting look, an interesting take at what a car, a family car should mean after all. So in that regard, I give it, so in that regard, I give the Chroma quite a lot of points in terms of originality and Fiat for having the courage to launch something different on the car market. So I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.